Yeah. No, no, I'm thinking like, I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, this is Aaron from Lone Star Drift. What we're gonna talk about today is Pro-Am YouTube marketing or something like that. Basically, the whole concept of this is you used to be a professional driver by going to Formula D and being a rock star and making your money from sponsors. And now we no longer are going to be using that career path in the same way because rich people have come into Formula D and they can now take up all of those spots. And now all of us normal grassroots guys need to go find something else to do if we wanna make racing our career. So I do it by doing events, but that's not really the best way to do it. Um, I host events and it's not really a livable wage for any event organizers in the nation other than maybe one or two. So that's not really a viable path. The correct viable, viable path, I think, right now is to create a large social media presence and have your own distribution so that sponsors can use that distribution to market their products and stuff. Um, it used to be you'd go to Formula D, they would have a great TV package, magazines would do stuff with them, and then you would be able to market through all of that to the sponsors, but that's no longer a thing because no one really watches Formula D on TV, the live stream isn't really what it was, um, and there's no longer magazines around, so you have to self-distribute everything that you do, even if you're a Formula D driver now. So Ryan Turek and all those guys that self-distribute really well, they're the guys that get all the sponsorship money. And even someone that might be winning and stuff wouldn't see the same type of sponsorship money such as Michael Essa because, you know, he wasn't really as usable for the sponsors. So I wrote something up and we're basically going to read through this on this tablet thing and I will interject and chat about stuff. But it's basically, this is a speech that I give some of my Pro-Am drivers to encourage them to be, kind of become YouTube stars and to take a different path than taking the Pro 2 mentality. So, here's where it starts and remember I'm reading this. Also, I'm allergic to cats in here. All right, what should I talk about? Social media marketing, why should one do it? A person should only do it if they find the time and effort of building their platform useful in the future. You must do the math um, to find out if the amount of time invested in it and the potential outcome is right for you. Possibly simply putting that time into your career is more worthwhile. Possibly social media marketing is right for you if you are naturally good at design, video, and marketing. Maybe it is not right for you if you do not intend to see drifting through to the degree that all this would be useful. So that just basically means like, maybe you should go be a doctor or something else that has a better career path long term because you don't have the natural ability to create media and all of the things or drive or be a mechanic or whatever. Um, maybe you should just go find a normal career path. Um, or maybe if you don't plan on following it through for several years because you can't follow something through, this is not for you. Okay, why do I do social media marketing? I do it because it markets Lone Star Drift well in an organic and natural way that engages the audience and includes them in what I, what I or we do. It doesn't feel spammy and it's more useful than simply running paid advertising on a platform such as Facebook or Instagram. It is incredibly time intensive though and difficult and also expensive. So quite often I am not sure that it is completely worth it. However, it does have amazing perks. The perks include networking, and branding, which does me good. The series, not so much me. I have never sold a sponsor who did not already intend to work with me or know who I was in advance. I also meet people internationally constantly and get to travel and network in ways that I never would have imagined. Okay, so let's think about the different platforms. We have YouTube, we have Instagram, we have Facebook, Snapchat, and Twitter. Let's break down each service. Instagram, it's very minimal effort to interact with Instagram and to post stuff. However, there's no direct monetization strategy, which means how do you get paid for posting? You must sell sponsors on the idea of trading tags for money or parts. So basically you can become influencers, or what they call them, on Instagram, and you can attempt through having a ton of followers to get things for free through your Instagram account. Um, Instagram's cool because it takes very little effort to put like pictures up, but again, there's no huge amount of like, it's kind of a little bit of a throwaway, throwaway thing as well. Because how much can people really get to know you on that platform? All right, Facebook. Facebook holds your audience for ransom, um, for paid advertising. So as you build up an audience, they want money 
for you to contact them. It's a great way to network, but not a great way to disseminate information on a regular basis without relying on paid advertising. Facebook video is a great platform for viral content, but it is not currently monetized at the moment and numbers are highly inflated. So Facebook lies to you about how many views that you're getting, because if they count someone scrolling through their feed and seeing three seconds of a video, that counts as a view. Whereas on YouTube, they have much longer strict like guidelines, even though no one knows what they are for how long a view is. So if someone watches one of my like seven hour videos on YouTube, they're most likely watching way more of it and receiving way more branding and stuff than someone that watches one three second clip on Facebook. All right, Snapchat. I have no idea how Snapchat works really for a company. It seems completely counterproductive that your audience is specifically people that do not want to be advertised to or have content that lasts. The content is specifically personal um, in short term. So the quality needs to be very low production quality to be able to make it often enough and to talk to people and everything. If you try and make big elaborate you know, pieces, they're not going to work on Snapchat. Um, so I'm not too big on Snapchat. Twitter. I have no idea how a racer would use Twitter to their advantage. The average car enthusiast spends no time on Twitter and at best you can only link to other platforms when using Twitter for the most part. I don't really think Twitter is that amazing. All right, YouTube is currently a gold mine though. However, it is super intensive to create content, build an audience and sustain it. A YouTube view can last for more than an hour and has amazing branding potential that an Instagram post or any other platform does not. An Instagram post probably has less than five seconds of engagement and most likely less than two. So people on Instagram just scroll through, double click, scroll through, double click. They're not really spending any time on it. Whereas with YouTube, they're sitting back most of the time. They're watching a lot of it. Um, a YouTube experience lasts on average several minutes and on channels such as mine, they average over eight minutes and up to 5.5 hours at a time. The huge value though is ad revenue, which lets you disintermediate your revenue stream from the sponsors, winnings or anything else and have a direct revenue stream from your audience. This allows you to reach a critical mass to sustain the creation of your media solely on the back of the media itself. And then of course, if you get big, you'll get lots of like sponsorship and partnership deals. All right. So we've kind of gone through the different platforms. YouTube is the one I pick. Let's talk about YouTube. Cost analysis. You must figure out <clears throat> if your time is well spent and what or and at what point an audience is worthwhile. Before you attempt to build a bunch of content, how much is a camera going to cost? How much is your video camera operator going to cost? An editor, etc. At a grassroots level, unless you have a buddy that wants to help for free, which is not a long-term sustainable model, you must do everything yourself to remain cost effective. This works off the model that your time is worthless and allows you to work for free, which is something everyone cannot do. How many hours can you put into content creation before there is some type of payout? That's a question. How many hours can you do it? You can't work forever for free. If you are never going to attempt to reach a fairly high level of drifting, whether it be for fun or competition, it is more likely worth it to just pay for parts and in instead of trying to get the media game to work for you and get all those parts for free or get paid to use them or anything else. Um, so if you're not going to take it far enough, just get a job, get out of this, turn this video off. All right. For some of us, we only know it. We only know that we want to pursue drifting as far as it will take us. And we have no overarching game plan. If we accept that we are willing to put in massive amounts of effort into it, we have something that most people don't. We have the willingness to create something long term without a definite payoff structure or definite goals. This allows us to be fluid and to work with what the world is becoming. Obviously, because all the social media stuff is so new, we don't really know sometimes. So we just do what we can. For instance, two years ago, I would have said the path to becoming a professional drifter required you to either do Formula D or transition into becoming a mechanic, a fabricator, a stunt driver, a test driver, a media creator or something else. But now I would say that there is an even easier and more direct path of becoming a vlogger on YouTube. There are more profitable and growing channels on YouTube related to, related to drifting and drifting car culture than professional drifters in Formula Drift. With the ability to monetize a sport, oh wait, Formula Drift, comma, where the ability to monetize a sport is capped at a certain size. 
Maybe the top 16 drivers and possibly in the future, top 32 drivers have the ability to monetize Formula D to the point where they do it for their whole income. But with YouTube, there is no real limit. You could have 1,000 successful channels associated with the same thing, broken out into project cars, fabrication, hardcore driving, vlogging, professional content creation, lifestyle, traveling, etc. This is the, democ the democratization of racing budgets, which <clears throat> used to only gravitate towards the richest and most prepared teams around the planet. But now, the sponsor dollars are gravitating towards the audience of organic and relatable channels of prepackaged eyeballs at a much lower cost than professional racing. Yes, these huge companies will probably continue working with Formula D and large organizations like that. However, the viewership on platforms such as YouTube and whatever comes next is the next platform has far more potential than any single racing series. The problem with a racing series is there is so much money invested in it that uh, there is so much money invested in that racing series that does not create entertaining content for people to enjoy, but instead goes into the traveling budgets, um, racing, racing engines that blow up, huge amounts of tires, everything else, because all the racing always escalates into something huge. Um, a typical tire company like Falcon Tires, West is in, Falcon Tires was investing millions of dollars in drifting around the planet each year and potentially reaching a smaller audience than they could have if they used more modern marketing techniques. A tire company is a bad example though, as they are probably best suited to use racing to market because you can see their product, it goes up in smoke, it's an exciting thing, you can show it super sticky and it works and everything else. Um, and it's also one of the most consumed things in racing. A fuel injector, however, cannot be seen in a race car and might be a better candidate to find some other type of method of marketing. Same thing goes for other things, such as a body kit. Rocket Bunny, for example, um, certainly was not made popular by Formula D, but rather the style kids and speed hunter type blogs. In fact, Formula D works against companies hoping to make style based parts as the cars in Formula D do not represent form over function type builds. Um, Products like that instead are best represented in careful cinematic content and not a live stream that is not beautiful. Um, another problem advertisers are having is being seen as authentic, cool, and approachable. Professional racing is starting to alienate grassroots drivers more and more for some reason, and companies such as Gumout probably have zero penetration into the drifting community. If they have great brand recognition and success in their marketing campaigns, it is because they somehow connect with an outside audience looking into drifting, um, but not understanding it. And they think that Gum Out is now a cool brand associated with drifting. However, the drifters themselves do not gain respect for the brand, regardless of how much they advertise directly to the drifters, and they never will. The more they are advertised to, the drifters, the more they actually disdain, or at best like myself, never even made the connection with what the product was. I actually had to look it up to even realize it's a fuel injector cleaner um, and that it advertises saving gas mileage. It's like advertising nuns to condoms. I doubt they're ever gonna buy them. So what are you going to do to create an online identity and create an audience? Well, first you need to identify your long-term goals. Create a start story arc and stick to it. You need to figure out how to create low cost entertaining content. If you like to build stuff, have a little channel building stuff and having fun with that and emulate a channel that you hold in high regard. If you wanna be a pro drift driver, build a story around that and identify someone that did a good job at it and emulate them within your own skill set and budget. The worst thing you can do is create a cringeworthy content, um, is to create cringeworthy content that drives people away. You don't wanna destroy your brand by doing half-assed things. Also, you don't wanna underestimate what it takes to create a successful online audience. It can be brutally hard. If you don't have the ability to follow through with what you started, this is going to be a complete waste of time. Don't do it if you're gonna waste all your time. For example, let me break something down for you. The Lone Star Drift channel requires about 60 videos per year at the current rate to grow its audience, and that is not enough. Our typical video recap and event requires Cy, our cameraman, to shoot for two days and travel you know, two days to each event, one day there, one day back. This is about 40 hours of lost wages, but he's paid for his time. But he does lose the ability 
an opportunity cost of doing anything else. If I have to edit for about 30 to 40 hours per event recap, um, no wait, I do have to edit for that long, 30 to 40 hours per event recap video. Um, Ian shoots with a drone for about 10 hours per weekend, and currently we're com getting some pickup footage from Tyler Capper, who is already there, but let's put him in at, say, 10 hours of effort. That means each event recap video requires um, about 100 hours of work, which is mind-numbing that they require that much work. Um, we do about eight event recap videos per year if all goes well. That means 800 hours of event recap video work. But that isn't enough to grow the channel. You need more content. So I do smaller videos which are much easier pr to produce, as well as some epically large ones I do for fun, such as my Japan videos. I won't include shooting the Japan videos because it happens organically and I'm there doing it already and I use an iPhone so it's easy, but I will include the editing time of about 60 hours. I did about five big adventure videos last year, so that's about 300 hours of editing. Then the smaller videos in our channel equal about the last 47 videos of content, and they take at least two to six hours to typically edit. So let's say 3.5 hours to be super conservative, and that comes out to 164 hours. That means the YouTube channel took at minimum 1,264 hours of work per year. Factor in some camera equipment, traveling cost, paying people, and you can see how massive it of, of an endeavor it is. This isn't something that can be done long term for free. Now factor in ad revenue from our channel and you come up with about 140 bucks per month, topping out at about $700 per month, very rarely, like once. Um, and that's how much we bring up in ad revenue. So basically, I would say from a money perspective, screw this, I quit. And most people should. However, this works out for me because I do not directly monetize a channel. It's my hobby and um, it's advertising for the Lone Star Drift series and I think it's fun. It's also an education, better than going to film school, which is something I thought about. And I meet amazing people like Dion and Sai and Tyler and get to create amazing content, work with incredibly expensive camera gear sometimes, and I really enjoy it. But this is not a sustainable model for anyone. Um, wait, yeah, this is not a sustainable model for normal people such as drivers. So they cannot emulate our channel. They would need to emulate someone that creates cheaper and easier content. Possibly they film with their phone and chat with the audience once a week, upload a GoPro clip once a week, and once a week post a 20 minute tech video on building and maintaining their race car. If they are successful, they could create a channel with far less effort than the Lone Star Drift channel is based upon. I've been cheating a bit lately as well, priming my channel with cool but super short and easy to edit Japan GoPro footage to keep the channel growing while I take a break from heavy editing getting ready for uh, round three. So I wrote this a little while ago and finishing up my Japan video as fast as I can. Um, so basically, YouTube creating content is very difficult. So you can't have super expensive camera equipment if you can't afford it. You can't have tons of, um, whatchamacallit, um, content that's difficult to create. It needs to be fairly easy, like point a camera at you or have your friends point cameras or do whatever but it's gotta be inexpensive content to create. Otherwise, you'll never be able to create enough of it to create a large audience and continue long-term. All right, so what's the best thing about YouTube? The best thing about YouTube is getting to have life experiences that aren't available for purchase. In the past 24 months, I've stayed in Australia in a big, cool penthouse apartment of a cool drifter and borrowed his JZX100, and I got to drive his Hilux around. I've met princes in the Middle East and experienced a part of the world I'd never thought I'd make it to. I've drifted in Japan for probably five weeks with the help of companies that appreciate me, such as What Monsters Do in BC Racing, um, so, I, I, so I could create awesome content and help them be a part of it. I got to hang out with my buddy Chelsea on the far sides of the globe on multiple continents. I met some of the most passionate and best drifters in the world and I get to drive with them. I get to drive the most hilarious cars all around the world too on the most hilarious tracks. I've been almost run over by Kumakuba multiple times in his off-road Jimny. I have been exposed to an online audience that is massive because of cool dudes like Taylor Ray and Adam LZ. Um, I literally cannot imagine all the insane stuff I'll get to do in the coming years because of YouTube and the content that I produce. And I would not doubt that I'll find my way to all over crazy parts of the globe and get to do all kinds of cool stuff. But on top of that, I get to take Lone Star Drift and my drivers to an audience around the world and I get to do rad stuff with my drivers at the events with the help of sponsors and with the help 
of everybody within the community and create a journal of the Lone Star Drift series. So we can look back over the course of however many years and see all the cool driving that we've done, all the cool cars that have been there, um, and we just get to experience everything and have it there as a journal so that it's never lost. And that means a lot to me. Um, and I think we're the only grassroots organization for like drifting in the United States or probably anywhere that really has our own channel on YouTube and produces so much content and has like a unified theme through it, which is what I also do is I spread goodwill. I try to have upbeat, cool music that's nostalgic that people can relate to um, or is just neat and funky, um, along with awesome drift cars in Texas, lots of smiling faces, kind of like make the videos aspirational and friendly and have people smiling and having fun. And I get to create the community for the Lone Star Drift series however I want. Because some people want it to be circle track racing or drag racing where everybody hates each other and is competitive and nobody like collaborates and lends people tools and you know, whatever. In our series, if someone breaks down, they will literally let their car go into comp with another driver so he can have points and go have fun. Like we lend our cars to each other, we lend tools, we lend trailers, somebody breaks down, we help them with parts. Um, I give tires to people regularly to help them out because I'm lucky to get some sponsored tires. We do pro two clinics to do training. We share that with the community to try and build up like community love and so that people don't feel like everybody going to Formula D are idiots from pro two status kind of thing. We just try and do whatever we can to shape the community and have an awesome time. So. If you want to continue the career path of being a drifter or like a racer, I think that YouTube is the way to do it. And I think that professional racing no longer needs to be the goal. If you got big on YouTube, you do not have to go do professional racing. You can stick around on YouTube, have your audience, do rad shit, build cool cars, help people out, entertain people, and you don't have to drive from Florida to Seattle to go racing, which is 65 hours each direction and spend an ass load of money. All that time, sorry, I burped. All that time could go into creating media to entertain people and have an awesome time. And it could also be used to leverage your relationship with local tracks to get seat time um, and promote those tracks. You could, I mean like the sky's the limit. You can do anything you want. You could, I don't know, you can leverage whatever you want with a gigantic audience. I get to use tracks in Texas regularly now to do pro two clinics because of rad guys like Taylor and Adam that come down and lend us our audience to do stuff like that. And then they get awesome free track time and we do rad stuff. And it's not something that scales the big events where we could have you know more than five or six people there because that's not how the tracks function. They need to rent out and they need to sell to people and everything else. But it is a great way to get us out there to practice and do rad stuff. And that kind of outside the box thinking is what drifting needs and what the sport needs and we need to do something different than what we've been doing for 14 years with just the exact same model and path for Formula D, which I think has run its course. And now that there's lots of wealthy people coming in, which I love wealthy people, I am not insulting them. I'm just saying for all the rest of us that don't have the ability to do it and we wanna make this our career, we need to be creative. We need to make it happen. All right, goodbye. Thank you sponsors. See ya. Goodbye YouTube audience. I hope you enjoyed this video. We're gonna do more like this.